Hello. Thank you for joining us for our virtual recorded parent orientation for Christ the King Lutheran Preschool. I'm Melissa Marzoff. I'm the preschool director here. And I, again, I'm just so thankful that you're able to participate in this way since we're not allowed to have orientation in person like I would prefer. I'm going to share my screen here so that you can see this really exciting PowerPoint presentation that I have prepared. If you have any questions about any of this afterwards, please reach out to me. You can call, email, even send me a text. Happy to address any concerns or answer questions you may have. This is our preschool staff. At the time of recording this, we are still looking to hire a teacher assistant, but I just know that the right person will find their way to us very soon. Susan Albert on the left here is your child's teacher. She's been with us for a few years now and has many years of experience working with young children. As we're preparing for school to start back up, there are some things you can do to help prepare your child for a successful year. If you haven't already, now is a good time to establish a routine both in the mornings and at bedtime, there are certain activities that we do. And if we stick with a consistent timeline and similar activities at those same times, can help your child to become more comfortable with this change of going back to school. And this, this is a huge change. Even if your child was in preschool a little bit last year, it's been a while. And I think all of us are going to need some time to adjust. Try to keep it positive though. I know my daughter, I have a son and a daughter. My daughter is one of those that if I were to talk to her too much about what's going to happen, it might make her a little worried. Like why is mom still talking about this with me? Maybe I need to be anxious now. My son though, on the other hand, I would let him know and I still do, even though he's in sixth grade now, at the end of the day, say, so here's what's going on tomorrow. And that would help him to just be a little more at ease if there was some sort of change taking place the next day. There are health routines you can be practicing at home as well, including hand washing, mask wearing, and physical distancing. Now I know some of these don't make a lot of sense to do at home with your family. However, it would be helpful to practice these routines uh, just so that it's easier once your child starts preschool. Hand washing, we will be doing a lot of that at preschool. 20 seconds, making sure we get tops and bottoms between the fingers and dry them really well afterwards. Mask wearing, I'll go over the mask policy in a moment here, but that's something you can practice at home as well. And distancing. When it's appropriate at preschool, we will be distancing. Um, each child will have their own desk. When we are in line and in rooms, we will try to keep some distance. Our classrooms are actually in a very large room right now so that we have space to play and have more room around the children and ourselves. That again is something you can talk about with your child. Our drop-off and pickup procedures have changed this year. The health district has a rule that we are not allowed to have parents in the building. So we're dropping off at the entrance to the building instead. Class starts at nine, but our doors will unlock at 845 each morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll enter the north parking lot from Cypress Avenue. You can see that on the map here if you follow the pink arrows. Drive south towards the preschool and then stop at the preschool double doors, which are located in the middle of the building where you see the little stop sign. I'll be out there. I will have my mask on and I will have a shield and gloves and a um, no touch digital thermometer, among other things. And um, I'll be there for the health screening. Please remain in your car and wear a face mask at all times during the health screening to protect my health and your own. 
At this point, uh, following the health screening, you can say your goodbyes to your child. And then I will make sure your child gets into the building where they'll go and wash their hands in the bathroom with our teacher assistant. When you're picking up, similar procedure. Class dismisses at 11.30 a.m. Please enter the north parking lot again and line up just like you did in the morning. Remain in your car, please, with your mask on. Students will be dismissed from the double doors and escorted to their car one at a time. One of our staff members will be escorting your child to the car, but you will need to make sure that your child gets buckled up properly and that they, if they're in their booster seat, that that's um, set up properly. Please bring your photo ID. As I'm getting to know some of our new parents, it's especially helpful for me and for Mrs. Albert. If somebody else happens to be picking up, we will definitely check their ID to make sure that um, the right child is going with the right adult. That being said, try to have the same adult drop off and pick up each day. It helps to streamline procedures. And if there was a need for us to know which parent picked up, it just makes it a little bit easier for our record keeping. If somebody else is picking up though, like maybe you're sick and um, not feeling well and somebody else needs to come and pick you up, then let me know, let Mrs. Albert know, that'll be fine. Make sure that person brings their photo ID. There is a face covering policy. We are following all of the guidance from the health district and the Washington State Department of Health. Everybody will be wearing a mask at all times during the preschool, unless eating or drinking, or occasionally outside under our staff's direction. Parents, you are responsible for providing and cleaning your child's masks. We will provide extra masks for each of your children. When we do our drive-through meet the teacher, I'll have a hand-sewn mask for each of your children. My mom sewed the masks. They have two layers of heavy, well, high quality quilting fabric. And then there's another layer of either dryer sheet or some sort of filtering material in the middle there. You don't have to use the mask I give you. You're welcome to bring your own. Uh, you're welcome to buy the surgical style masks as well. Whatever mask you use though, it needs to be one that covers both the nose and the mouth for your child and fits properly so that there aren't a lot of gaps where air can leak out and it's not going to fall off of their face a lot. We do have lanyards that will provide each of your children as well. The lanyard is the breakaway style so that if it gets caught on something, it's not going to get too tight and possibly um, choke your child. It'll break, it's safer. And the masks will be attached from each of the hooks so that at snack time it can hang around their neck. And that way it's less likely to fall on the floor and get stepped on or lost. You can practice prop proper mask wearing at home or if your child is already going to the store with you and running errands or whatnot, uh, that's a great opportunity to practice mask wearing as well. Now there are certain symptoms that uh, per health district regulations, we are required to um, not let people in our building if they have these symptoms. They include cough, fever or chills, and a fever is 100.4 or higher temperature, or it could be a subjective fever, which means if your temperature normally runs low, like mine does, I'm normally 97 degrees, then a fever might be lower than 100 degrees for you. Shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, sore throat, muscle or body aches, a headache, fatigue, new loss of taste or smell, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. All of these are symptoms of COVID-19, but they could be symptoms of some other illness as well. So just to be on the safe side, any one of these symptoms that your child has or a member of your household has means that he or she cannot go to school. If when we're doing our health screening at the door, 
uh, your child or you indicate that somebody has one of these symptoms, then you're going to have to go home. You cannot allow your student to come to school. Similarly, if your child develops one of these symptoms while at school, then he or she will be sent home immediately as well. There are other symptoms that your child may have that although they're not COVID symptoms, we ask that you keep them home. Also, they include a new rash, lice. Um, there might be some other symptom that your child is feeling where you just know that your child isn't really feeling like herself that day. And it's definitely um, okay to miss a day of preschool and take some time to recuperate. The health district actually has a chart here to help us identify what to do and for how long someone needs to miss school or work. When I do the health screening, if there are no red flags, then your child will be allowed to go to school. However, if your child or you indicate that you're a close contact, even though you have no symptoms, if you're a close contact of somebody with COVID cannot go to school. If anyone in your household is positive, test positive for COVID-19, but has no symptoms, still cannot go to school. And definitely, as I said before, if someone has symptoms of COVID, you can't go to school. And you'll need to stay home until 10 days after symptom onset, at least, or 72 hours after the symptoms resolve without the use of fever or pain reducing medicine. That means um, you have to wait for the fever to break naturally without using Tylenol or ibuprofen. And these time frames, it's whichever one is longer, 10 days or 72 hours, whichever is longest. And if your child's going to be out of class, please let me know so that we can track these things and um, just have a heads up and prepare better. Again, if your child has a symptom of illness that shows up while at school, then we will isolate that child in a separate classroom. Um, of course, I will be there with your child, so she's not alone, but we'll give you a call and you'll need to come immediately to pick, pick her up from school. Also, if your child says he tested positive for COVID less than 10 days ago, I will trust your child and give you a call and have you pick him up. And if he says that he was exposed to somebody with COVID, that he says, I'm a close contact, even if there are no symptoms, then he'll need to go home immediately. And the same is true for all of our staff members. If a staff member has any symptom of illness or expresses to me or others that they tested positive less than 10 days ago or that they were exposed to COVID, then they will have to go home immediately as well. Other health measures that we're following, the following in the classroom and outside as well are distancing. So six feet of distance, we'll still have time and room to play, but at the times where we are sitting at our desks and lining up or in the hallway, we will space out and there will be markers on the floor showing the kids where they can stand. We're in the larger classroom, which helps with this. We also have increased the ventilation and outside time for our classes. So bring a coat. There are coat cubbies in the classroom where your child can hang it when he doesn't need it. But with the windows open and we have sliding glass doors and a patio with our classroom right now, there are screen doors so no one can escape but um, we will have a lot of fresh air coming in. So it might be nice to have the coat. We will be washing our hands a lot more and there will be extra disinfecting and cleaning taking place in the rooms. This is a picture of our classroom right now as it's set up. You can see each child does have their own desk. Each chair has a pouch hanging from it and in that pouch will be a pencil box. The pencil box will be your child's to keep. At the end of the school year, they can take it home and it has all the supplies they will need for preschool this spring. We're not sharing supplies. Health district says we shouldn't anyway. 
Um, so they'll have their own set of crayons, markers, scissors, glue. There's play areas and there are some clear plastic dividers in the room to help the kids with their distancing. And you can see the windows and sliding glass doors there. Um, and there are some windows that are look like they're closed with the wood to the right in the picture there, like by the easel. There's a kitchen inside there and we have multiple sinks there and bathrooms are just around the corner as well. So there's lots of access to hand washing. Our dress code at preschool is not like what you would see at an elementary school necessarily where um, we're really strict, but we do want to encourage self-sufficiency. Comfortable clothes are wonderful. There's nothing wrong with elastic pants, even though jeans and overalls and some of those jumpsuits are really cute. They might be more difficult for your child in the bathroom. We're not able to help your child dress and undress um, when they are there. They should be able to pull up and down their own pants or leggings, whatever it is they have on. As far as shoes go, Velcro or slip-ons are encouraged instead of laced shoes, just because um, it takes more time for us to have to tie shoes for the kids. Saves us a little bit of work there. Dress weather appropriately. It does rain around here, as you know. So uh, whatever coat you send your child with to school, uh, make sure that it's appropriate for the season. We ask that they don't wear rain or snow boots in the classroom. If it's a super rainy day or it happens to be snowing, your child can wear boots, but we're going to have them take them off and keep them in their cubby in the classroom just so they don't accidentally step on someone else's fingers and smush them. We ask that you send your child with a book bag. They're, uh, the larger ones like reusable shopping bags are pretty easy to fit the projects in. Have your child's name written on it. Again, this doesn't have to be fancy. This is just something to hold their snack and to um, hold their craft at the end of the day. We are still doing show and tell, but the procedures are slightly different. We will not be passing around the show and tell item in the class. Your child will just hold it up for everyone to see. And that will be on your child's special day. There will be a schedule sent out that shows when it's his or her special day. When it is that day, please send your child with just one show and tell item. You can put it in a bag so the class can try and guess what it is based on clues that your child gives. Don't send weapons or violent toys like toy guns, even Nerf guns, avoid those. And please don't send live animals for show and tell unless you get permission from me first. Our snack policy is changing this year um, because we're unable to share food in some of the ways that we have in the past. Students are going to each bring their own individual snack in a quart or sandwich size clear Ziploc bag. I ask that it be clear as opposed to Tupperware so that our staff can easily glance at the snack and make sure that it doesn't have say, a bunch of peanuts in it that could cause an allergic reaction for the kids sitting next to them. Students will not be allowed to share food. We'll provide water for your child to drink though. We have little cups. We will fill with water and give to your child. Snacks do not have to be fancy. We do prefer healthy snacks though. Um, as fun as it is to have lots of sugar sometimes, it's um, not really the best situation um, health-wise, especially when we're at school. We're trying to encourage self-sufficiency here again. So whatever type of snack it is, if your child is unable to open it themselves or it's something that they're not able to eat easily, you might wanna rethink the snack slightly or the packaging. Please do not send nuts, candy, cake, or cupcakes. Frosting is super messy. Cake and cupcakes are super crumbly sometimes, although we can sweep up a few crumbs. Um, some snacks are just messier than others. 
and nuts are definitely um, an allergy problem for some of our children. And they are for myself as well, peanuts are. So no peanuts or any other nuts in class. If your child has severe food allergies and you haven't told us already, please let us know or any other severe allergies. Um, we need to have those on record just in case. Tuition is due at the first of the month and tuition is $200 per month. We accept credit card payments through our parent portal. There's a link on our website. If you would prefer to have your credit card swiped through our card reader, you can make arrangements with me um, to do that. Probably at the end of class would work better, but we can make plans so that it doesn't slow down parent pick up and drop off as much. I also accept cash and checks still. Um, you can give those to me, not the teacher, and um, unless I'm not there. Uh, and then make your check out to Christ the King Lutheran Preschool. Credit card payments do include a small fee, by the way. Our school calendar, there are a few dates to be aware of this shortened school year. Class starts March 1st, that's a Monday. We'll try to follow the Snohomish School District's calendar, which means there will be spring break, April 5th through 9th. Our last day of class is June 16th. Right now, that is scheduled to be the last day of school for Snohomish School District. If there is a need for Snohomish to extend their school year beyond the 16th, um, we may or may not choose to extend our year. It depends on how many days they're adding on to make up for snow. Our website and monthly newsletter will have other important dates and reminders as well. You'll wanna check those when they come out. An example of an important date might be that it is St. Patrick's Day and we're all wearing green that day or that it's um, Veterinarian's Day and you need to bring your own little stuffed animal with you. Although it's unlikely we'll be having Veterinarian's Day this year. I thank you for participating again in this. Um, there is some paperwork that will need to be turned in to me. You can either submit it via email or at our drive through Meet the Teacher event on February 24th. These are your immunization records for your child. You can provide a doctor's printout or a CIS that's printed. You can also fill that out yourself and have the doctor sign it. If there is some sort of um, exemption that you have for vaccines, like a medical exemption or personal exemption, then you are welcome to, um, you need to have those exemption forms filled out, signed by a doctor and turn those in to me as well. The only, just to reiterate this, um, I know it came out via email as well. There are no longer, uh, we no longer accept personal exemptions for the MMR vaccine. That is Washington state law, that every person um, in order to attend our school and all schools around here and all staff have to prove that they have had their measles, mumps and rubella vaccine. You will need to provide proof of that one. Um, all others, they do allow exemptions for personal reasons. And of course, religious and health exemptions are allowed for all of them. There's a student information questionnaire that will be going out and that can be completed online. Uh, it's a Google form that I've created and we have a liability waiver um, for each of you to sign as well. I'll email those out and you can bring it back to the Meet the Teacher event. If you forget yours, I'll have extras at the event as well. Well, I hope that you found this helpful and again, I do encourage you to reach out to me if there are any questions that you have or something you'd like to discuss. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you, seeing your child, getting to know your child better um, in just a couple of weeks. All right, take care, bye-bye.